Welcome to Read Drink Talk, a book club podcast where we read dope books, drink liquor, and talk shit. My name is Anthony Renteria. I'm Ariel Fletcher. And today we begin our first breakdown of the first 100 pages of Carrie. Carrie is a book that was released in 1974. It's a horror novel by American author Stephen King, and it centers around a young woman named Carrie who is bullied at school. Just as a reminder, we will be covering the first 100 pages of this book, and we will be spoiling anything and everything that happens in these 100 pages. So if you don't want to be spoiled, come back after you read the book, or if you don't care, then just listen along. Before we begin talking about this book, I wanted to ask you, what are you drinking? I have wine tonight, so I am drinking a Pinot. Don't know the, what the brand is. Forgot to check, but yeah, I'm on a white wine. I The only other thing I had oh. was vodka, and last week I was just like, no, that just did not hit. So <laughs> I didn't want to do that again. <laughs> So I'm like, all right, wine it is. What about you? What what are you drinking? I heard the ice in the background, so got to be something good. Yeah. I went back to my local liquor store, mm-hmm. and I've been like getting all these like seltzer weird mixed can drinks that they have. Mm-hmm. So this time I got a Jam- Jameson, which I guess is Irish whiskey, mm-hmm. and they have a ginger and lime like spritzer with oh. Irish, their, their Irish whiskey in it. Ooh. And so far, it's all right. I thought it was going to be more of a Moscow mule, but yeah. it's way more sweeter. Oh, and lemon, lemony. okay. Okay. And all right. It sounded good. <laughs> I mean, it, yeah, it sounds better than it actually is. And it gives me a headache. Like yesterday, <laughs> oh, I was like pre-gaming a, a bunch before we moved our, our day to t- today to record. And then I was like, all right, I'll stop drinking now because I got to save some for today <laughs> and then like i laid down and just immediately had like the worst headache ever and i was like oh Damn. fuck <laughs> probably all the so, sugar oh, yeah i think that's what it is because i don't drink sugar like i don't drink right. sodas yeah so hopefully today is not as bad but if it is you know it's cool the i'm trying to start on a vodka soda thing but not yet like i just i, I just did not want to do that tonight so i was like yeah it's just gonna have to be a wine but wine gets me mm. there so it's all good like i'll still be, be just as lit (laughs) by the end of this episode so we're good we're good to go awesome awesome well to begin if you didn't hear our last little mini episode we are reading stephen king and in that episode i uh talked about how i want to read all his books in the order of release so carrie is his first majorly published book i think he actually wrote three other books before this but I don't know. I need to research to find out what those were oh, or when okay. they were published. But this was his first major published book. And I just wanted to give a, like a little backstory on like how this book came to be because it's like a big moment in his life and in like the fiction world. Like I can't imagine what books would be without <laughs> Stephen King in a way yeah, or even just general horror. Like the genre itself owes so much to him. Mm-hmm. One thing I just really wanted to note on, I was listening to an audio book oh, and he yeah. kind of talks about the the origin and inception of this book and like it was kind of based about, about uh, two young women that he knew in high school who were bullied and then passed away I think one was like suicide and the other one as well and then also he read like some science journal about telekinesis or whatever the possibility of it so he kind of like combined those two ideas wrote two little pages and then he thought it was crap threw it in the trash can and then I guess later on his wife went through his like little trash bin and she pulled it out and read it thought it was amazing and she <laughs> went back to him and was like, hey, you've got to finish this. And then he did. And we have this book. And it's oh, like wow. one of those cool, crazy stories where it's like, without her, we wouldn't have him. Right. Like, I really think like this book was the right book at the right time. Yeah. And it's just so crazy. It's like without his wife, I don't wow. think he would have been an author. I just don't think it would have happened. So that's crazy. I, I Imagine all cr- the things we wouldn't have gotten without her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course him, but like, really, I'm like, kudos to you, ma'am. Thank you very much for this mm-hmm. because I do love Stephen King. So I was excited when we switched that pure straight crap um, from last <laughs> week. <laughs> <laughs> to like not to shit on that author but kind of at the same time um but anyway so moving on just a, Stephen just King. a light circle just piss. A, just a yeah light. It, just a light <laughs> exactly exactly bringing back the circle piss yeah but just like a tinkle a, a circle tinkle <laughs> i love stephen king and it's funny because i hate horror in real life like i love true crime i love like 
guts and gore and all that i love sci-fi i love all that stuff but then like horror films i cannot watch horror movies like to save my life like i'm such a scaredy cat i don't know why but (laughs) it's just like never been a thing but i can read horror all day and so stephen king is one of those things where like i've been i haven't read it before but i like hopefully we'll get to that at some point in this you know podcast but i have been like wanting to watch the movie recently like the remake not the not the original but the remakes that they've done in the last few years I have like been wanting to watch it for some reason even though I'm like scared mm-hmm. at the same time but Stephen King is just like one of those authors like I want to read it I kind of want to watch it you know what I'm saying so but it's like only Stephen King I don't want to watch anything else I don't like horror movies at all but like I'll <laughs> I'll read the fuck out of a horror book so I've read a few other like Stephen King novels and stuff this is my first time reading Carrie though and like we talked about last week I have seen the movie but not like the OG and I think I've only seen the remake one time so I didn't really going into this book Book, I only remember like the big points or, you know, the, the big parts of the movie. But I'm kind of interested to go back and watch once we finish the book because I want to see how similar to the book it is because there's some stuff yeah. in this book. I'm like, God damn, like, I don't I don't <laughs> remember seeing that. I don't remember reading. I mean, you know, I don't remember seeing that in the movie or it's just something yeah. that didn't stand out, but really stands out in the book. But anyway, um, yeah, all that to say, like Stephen King is a fucking boss. And do you know how many books he's written? Like, do you know where we're at or maybe not written, but published? Is that something that you like? <laughs> No. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up real quick. He's written 64 novels, Fuck. five nonfiction books, 200 short stories. Ooh. Is the tally on Wikipedia. Wow. So he is a writer, writer. Okay. Got yeah, you. He's, got you. <laughs> he's fucking legit. A, like yeah. that. He's just like pumping that's, them out. That's really cool. Yeah. And also, when was this book published? 1974. Okay. And so that's also amazing that this man has been writing for what, like 40 years? damn near (laughs) and is still relevant this person who has been literally writing since before my mother was born and we're reading his books now and enjoying versus that wuthering heights bullshit It does not translate to modern times, yeah. whereas like something like definitely I do not want to read. But I feel like, you know, 50 years from now, people are still going to be reading Stephen King. We're already 40 yeah. years in and people are still enjoying and he's still writing. So I'm like, yeah, like this dude knows what the fuck he's doing. Because how do you st- how do you remain relevant that long doing something like that? Yeah. And not only relevant, but I think every book debuts as the New York Times number one bestseller. Damn. So this like dude he like, just stayed on. Wow. <laughs> like, that's crazy it's... that's talent this dude like sold his soul to the devil on some shit like that <laughs> like this is some shit you're like bitch what that really speaks to like this man's level of talent and I, yeah. I don't know like i i do I've, I've never read a stephen king now i don't know how many i've read like i've never sat down and counted i'd have to go through a list and be like oh, okay yeah i read that read that read that but i've never read a stephen king novel and not enjoyed it like just yeah. never so i'm definitely psyched about this starting yeah. to get into all of the Stephen King stuff. So that's a lot of books we got to run through, though. You said 60, yeah. <laughs> 63 or 64. Like, that's a lot. So but it'll it's, it'll it'll last like our whole life. Yeah, our whole I mean, life. exactly. <laughs> we'll still be here reading Stephen King 10 years from now, everybody like just, hey, yeah. we finally reached book 58. <laughs> and by the time we get there 10 years from now, he'll be at like 80 books. So it's oh, yeah, he'll all still- good. <laughs> It's all good. It just keeps growing and growing. But I guess that that, that should lead us into our actual conversation in this book. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to start with you because, you know, you said you'd watch the movie, never read this. What were your, I guess, like just general impressions of the first hundred pages? Like, how did it read? Was it boring or slow especially coming off of like red rising is it- the book is slower if we're comparing it to like red rising at least in the first hundred pages we're building up still however i was not bored i i read it before bed and it kept me interested the whole time i will say like bullied is such a fucking understatement like i feel <laughs> like these kids tortured this girl and for her having a period like i felt so bad for carrie oh my gosh I can't imagine like being in school and getting bullied like this I I mean even like at my school now mind you my high school was a little different uh, well a lot different it was really small 
it was a college prep school. So not that there wasn't any bullying, but we were kind of like all focused on our grades and stuff. (laughs) So like we didn't have anything (laughs) like this where there's those clear cut lines like in the movies. And I don't know if that's like a real high school experience for people, but for me, it's just not. So like even the gym teacher's initial reaction, yelling at her and just being like, bitch, what the fuck? Like clean yourself up. And then only after did she realize, <laughs> oh, oh my god like this girl's never had a period before like, and i'm just like damn this girl never catches a fucking break at school that's mm-hmm. so crazy did you go to a normal high school like is this like no is this like a normal thing does this happen like <laughs> this level of bullying or, or is this like dramatic i don't know i truly don't know my high school experience was definitely weird and there wasn't like really bullying because Like, Mm -hmm. it's almost like bullies feed off you being afraid or whatever. Right. I just remember, like, the moment where I was like, talk shit about me. Like, I don't give a fuck. And then they would stop because there is no entertainment. But when I read the book, what it really reminded me of, that is, like, probably the closest Mm -hmm. my life has ever gotten to, like, Carrie's life, which Mm -hmm. was elementary school, is probably when I was the most bullied. I went to a school in uh, Chelsea, Alabama, and... At the time, I was the only kid that wasn't white in this whole elementary school. Well, me and my brother, we were like the only two. Well, my brother wasn't really picked on because he would actually just get in fights with everyone. Oh, okay. okay. I was the more scaredy, kind of shy, timid person that I I think like Carrie kind of embodies. Yeah. So like I was bullied like (laughs) bad. Like I don't even want to talk about the detail of it. But like, I don't know, the first time I read it, like it really, like I really connected with Carrie in that Mm -hmm. way because of my experience. And it wasn't to the severity of her stuff, but when like a whole group is making fun of you, I think there's like something to where people just can't help but join in. Like how even the teacher joins in. Yeah. There was this teacher who I think she was like trying to do well, quote unquote, but she noticed I was obviously like Hispanic or Latino or whatever the fuck. She decided to take it upon herself to create... a fucking ESL class program for me specifically oh. and and it, it was horrible because I already knew how to read I was reading oh, fuck. at like a middle school level oh, yeah damn. So she, she and then she like purposely would take me out of this class and it was just like wow way to single you out oh yeah dang. and I just remember that first day she took me out of class everyone immediately thought I was just in like a special needs class oh, or that I was like special or whatever man. and every time I walked back in or I walked out like I could feel the joke and the laughing and he doesn't know English and like all this kind of shit to the point to where like I stopped talking to people so like I almost made it reality because I felt stupid and dumb and it was just confusing and I was like so young like I didn't know what to do or think you know like I thought shit I guess I am like handicapped in some way or like maybe I am dumb or maybe like I don't know it was just like horrible experience and so like (laughs) that is terrible I'm like genuinely sad for you right now and I mean obviously I know there's nothing we can do to change it now I hope that I hope that teacher has learned her fucking lesson fucking bitch Um, because what the fuck but but yeah so like I really connected with this book the first time I read it I still like really connected it's like a visceral experience yeah like there's moments where I feel like we really get get inside Carrie's head where she's Mm -hmm. angry and like that's something I really felt when I was young it was like huge anger that was the only emotional response I could think of at the time was they hurt me I have to hurt them back or whatever right right and I mean luckily I didn't and didn't like spawn into you know an evil kid I don't know it just it makes me like sympathize with these kind of characters and stories and Mm. This is like something I've struggled with because, you know, I've kind of experienced it in my life. I was like, well, how do I write about it? And sometimes I get scared because if you write a little too far one way or the other way, you could be seen or it could be read as you want bullies to hurt other people Mm -hmm. you know and then you can get into what happens nowadays tragically and sadly is you know school shooters and yeah other types of like fucking crazy just terrorism essentially how do you tell this story and like i don't think you can tell this story now no i I don't think so either yeah i mean we're getting all this information about carrie in the first hundred pages but not necessarily getting a lot of how she thinks or how she feels Mm -hmm. every now and again we kind of get thoughts on like whatever's happening but for the most part it, we're just an outsider just kind of like looking in on the situation and I I mean I I really feel for this girl also an- another thing I didn't really remember that her mother was super like religious but it's her own she's basically built her own version of religion I thought that was really interesting I watch a lot of true crime mm. and like you know like real like serial killers like really yeah. interesting 
me and like things like that. And that's like a common theme is super religious upbringing, especially, you know, like when you have an overbearing parent like her mom is and like overbearing is the most the lightest and most delicate way to put it because her mom seems Mm. like fucking psychotic to be honest (laughs) like she seems like a horrible person and really she's like setting carrie up for failure first of all how did you not tell this girl about her period carrie's what 16 or 17 in this book and never knew what the fuck a period was and Mm. then she goes to school and bam has a period for the first time and now she's getting made fun of like so many different things that like they bring up and i'm like yeah her mom could have better prepared her for this information (laughs) i don't know it's it's like her mom is just like setting her up for for failure and i i do hate her mom i'm not gonna lie to you like i don't like bad moms (laughs) like that just really (laughs) That just really, that really, that really gets to me. I have, I have my own mommy issues and I won't, like, I won't just be like, oh, my mom's a bad mom or anything like that. But I, I have yeah. my own mommy issues. And I, so I just, I really feel for anybody who has a less than desirable relationship with their mother. And this is by, this got to be the, one of the worst <laughs> <laughs> relationships with the mother that I've ever read. So I'm like, damn, I could see how we get to where we get to at the end of this book you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. so but so for you just on 100 pages of the book like what what feelings are you getting reading for the umpteenth time (laughs) i i will say the first time i read it i think i really tapped into my hatred of bullies and stuff but now that i'm older you realize like everyone's human and you know everyone had their own host of issues and shit to deal with and like yeah it sucks like no one should ever treat a child this way it's it's almost like i'm not over it but there's like a understanding of what happened and luckily yeah. it was not as severe as what happens in this book the other thing you brought up that that i find very interesting the religion aspect and mm-hmm. i don't know i think it's safe to say like this is an extremist religious viewpoint yeah. character yeah. like the mother what, what i was gonna say is so like i just it's kind of insane to think he wrote this in the 70s I don't know the exact number, but I would imagine like 80% (laughs) of people in the 70s were, you know, religious in some sort of way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then for this to just come out swinging, I imagine some religious people read this and got offended. But I don't see why when this is a very extreme person, you know? Right. But I think it's interesting because like I haven't had like a huge relationship with religion, but there Mm -hmm. was like a point in time in my life where I thought it would help me. And like Mm -hmm. I tried diving into it, but it just didn't give me what I wanted or Mm -hmm. like, I don't Mm -hmm. know, it was just like its own point in my life but like yeah like i don't hold anything against like her character so interesting because it's so like she is so diabolic <laughs> extreme yeah i mean because it really end. like shows how and and i'm the same way i, I like i said I, I wouldn't consider myself to be religious i when i was younger i used to go to church and things like that but not you know kind of like when you when you grow up a certain way it's like you Mm -hmm. don't really have a choice and my my upbringing was weird because i i didn't start off in a religious household and then my mom remarried when i was 12 years old and the man she married was religious like his family was religious so then at 12 years old now i'm like forced to go to church every sunday but anyways all that to say that like this book really shows like how easily religion can be weaponized against Mm -hmm. people and against like being different not even being different like just being normal and having like normal like human curiosities like a carrie's mom like is talking about like sex being a sin even and i've never okay i have never ever 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 seen a religion that talks about like not that I know all theology and religion mm-hmm. also, but I've never mm-hmm. seen one that literally just like demonizes sex, even when it's within like wedlock. I've never seen that. Mm-hmm. Like normally that's like a thing that's like, yeah, like sex when you're not married is a bad thing. But when you're married, like it's a thing that happens and you have children and blah, blah, blah. Like like her mom is like, absolutely not. It's almost like like anything that makes you human her mom is like absolutely the fuck not i'm literally so against that (laughs) and you're the devil and you're gonna go to hell like Uh, it just seemed so 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 extreme and i've never Mm -hmm. seen that before because there's a lot of religions out there that really exploit sex and just do whatever they like make rules to make like to make sex with underage people or girls Mm. and and boys like 
appropriate, like make it like, oh, well, God said this. And you're like, wait a minute. God said you can have sex with a 12 year old girl. Like if you want to, like, I don't know, Mm. like stuff like that. That's typically what I've seen. But her mom is just like, literally everything is of the devil. I just like, (laughs) just like what? Like what is happening here? It's so crazy how it's just, but I mean, like I said, at the same time, I feel like it's kind of realistic, but maybe not that part in general, like maybe not the sex part, but like, it's just so realistic because religion really can be weaponized against people. And Mm -hmm. it definitely has been historically. And it still is Mm -hmm. weaponized against people who are considered different like yeah. gay people or like basically wanting to do anything fun or cool <laughs> it's like it's and so the, looked up, like looked down on yeah it's crazy but the the thing that i i mean i've always thought this but the thing like rereading it this time that really stood out to me is like her character especially and like how you're talking about you know how it can things can be weaponized to the extreme in any scenario like i felt Just from this reading, like I really connected with or I really realized how sexist religion can be if uh taken to the full extent. Uh Like it like almost like this whole book is about like like how like the suppression of like women and their desires and their femininity and their bodies and their autonomy. And like that is like the mom character is just like even her boobs. Yeah, like you are a woman, <laughs> therefore you are evil. Is yeah. like the whole theme of, like she, of the book. Yeah, and she makes Carrie go like basically repent for having a period. I'm sorry, what? Mm. <laughs> like yeah, that? Like, like she's like get in your closet. Like ex- what? Like what is happening? Because of just a normal, literally the most normal bodily function for a woman, at least, right? Like that's just an mm-hmm. expectation for most women that's just an expectation you're going to you're going to menstruate it at some point you know and the fact that her mom's like wow you're such a fucking sinner like knowing damn well she's having a period every month too that's why she's got pads in her fucking thing that carrie goes and gets out of her mom's own thing like oh i'm gonna use these pads or tampons that Mm -hmm. carrie's like i use this to dab my lipstick (laughs) before that was funny because i'm like what (laughs) that's what you thought Uh... that was for which i guess like what else would you think it was for but it was such a funny thing but yeah like i'm like damn your own mother is just like straight just demonizing everything that makes you a woman you can't have boobs Mm. you know you can't Mm -hmm. wear certain clothes you can't wear certain colors no like and then even talking about like the sexual desires like just like Mm -hmm. normal things that happen to you when you're when you're a teenager and you're going through puberty and you know like just like normal stuff just like oh no you can't have these types of thoughts and these types of like i I don't know that's that's just it's, it's it's fucked up, I guess, is the best way to yeah. say it. <laughs> That's like my oh favorite my gosh, thing to yeah. say on this <laughs> podcast. It's like, damn, that shit was fucked up. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, that's how I feel. One, one, one final thing that I remember noticing, and like, obviously this is written by, by a male, Stephen King, um, mm-hmm. but he, he talks about like his wife reading it uh, over and over again and correcting anything he got wrong because even in that <laughs> intro that I mentioned he's like I don't know anything about this shit so I imagine he had you know some good guidance but one thing like I remember the first time I read it that really stood out to me too was like there's a part here in the beginning where Carrie is like essentially like turned on like thinking about stuff like she mm-hmm. <laughs> describes her like nipples being hard and yeah. like all this kind of stuff and I don't know if this is still today with like the new generation of youngsters probably not but I remember one thing that was super taboo when I was growing up and I felt like often disgusted in myself over was like, like I would always feel like horny or whatever as mm-hmm. like a young teen, you know? And then yeah. I remember I would ask other people and I was like, Oh, I don't, I don't do that. Like you're, you're a freak or whatever. <laughs> and then like liars, if, if I even asked the girl, it'd be like, no girl ever has masturbated or mm-hmm. watched porn or all that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. And I remember reading this like that first time I was like, huh, so girls do like feel this thing. And it's like that kind of like weird taboo. And like, I just imagine like if I felt it as a male, then I I can only imagine as a female when everyone's regurgitating, like, we don't do this. We don't do this. You're not supposed to feel this. And I just imagine like the amount of suppression that can feel like. And I think, you know, how we're talking about the religion, you know, painting or this specific religious person, the mom painting 
all femininity and womanhood as evil and vile, like mm -hmm. even to like a lesser degree, like just the idea of wait, I can't be horny because I'm a girl and like yeah. I have to be X, Y, Z. And it's like those stereotypes <clears throat> and just gender norms yeah like it's just so crazy that we're still going through that oh uh, yeah still and, so and yeah and I, that's what i was gonna say like definitely like as a woman who used to be a teenage girl right like i mean i'm 26 now so you know born in what 96 and like that was something that i still experienced even as a teenager like this book was written in the 70s and i was a teenager in the 2010s and mm -hmm. it's like that was still definitely a thing like we all know that it's almost like it's like that same mindset like boys will be boys like we all know mm -hmm. that this is a thing that boys go through and boys feel this and you're almost just kind of like making exceptions for that but when you're a girl yeah. it's like that's absolutely not like I even I remember like I know you said okay you felt like shame and I that's interesting I won't say that I never met anyone like that or anything like that before but like it was just such a we just know that boys are like that right you just like expect yeah. that from boys but as a teenage girl that was something that even I dealt with like shame over and it was just something like I almost like completely avoided when I was a teenager. And it wasn't really until I got to college where that was something that like even just exploring your, my own just thoughts, you know what I'm saying? Mm, like being like, yeah. OK, I don't have to feel guilty about that kind of stuff because that shit is normal where I didn't really yeah. get that that shit was normal and it was OK and it's acceptable. And it's just like a human thing until I was already in college. And it's not like I grew up like I went to church as a kid. I lived in a like I say religious like like still loosely because yeah like we went to church and stuff like that but there was never like it wasn't like anywhere to this extreme it wasn't like anything crazy so I still had like freedom to do stuff but like that was even still just something that I guess that it's not necessarily rooted in religion you know it's kind of just like a societal thing that we just mm, suppress women yeah. at every fucking chance every opportunity <laughs> end, right like so like her going Fuck. through this i'm like yeah that's shit that's some shit i was going through too like 40 yeah. years after she was going through it like and that's probably mm -hmm. something that like i was a teenager 10 years ago like that's probably something that teenage girls today in 2022 are still going through and still feeling and i don't know like hopefully at some point that just kind of like goes away where we just like accept that just like humans are human like whether you're male or female yeah. it's a thing like your hormones are raging when you're a teenager and you're gonna be curious and you're gonna have these like weird feelings that you never felt before and kind of just like taking that taboo-ness like away from that and just making it mm -hmm. like it's just a normal thing where you can educate because i feel like education would just make such a difference like especially like in this book as well like if someone if if her mother had educated her like we wouldn't yeah. have had this huge outburst about her having her first period like that would have just been something that she would have been expecting or that she knows like okay and is not thinking like oh my god I'm dying because I'm bleeding from mm. between my legs you know what I'm saying like there's so many things that like just educating like kids on would be so much better and then like that's just gonna get me into a whole thing about like sex education and stuff and how shitty it is in the in this country but like yeah. there's just like Ew. so many things that could Ew. could be different because they're still teaching like they're still teaching abstinence well i mean i think so i mean they were definitely teaching abstinence when i was a, a teenager and my sister um is 14 years old she's in high school now so i'm sure she's probably i think we did sex ed sex ed when i was in mm. seventh or eighth grade and it was literally just like sign this abstinence card and also here's a bunch of videos on how sex um can give you these terrible stds that you never yeah, want to look at <laughs> Sex ed was just like a 45 minute like trauma. Uh, yeah. yeah <laughs> like all the worst, disgust, most disgusting pictures of STDs and stuff that you could ever think of. And them just telling you, like, basically, you'll fucking die if you ever have sex. And I just think that's so detrimental. Or we could be like really educating people mm. and that's why we have so many adults who have have no idea about anything about their bodies don't know anything about yep. their sexual health like don't go get tested mm -hmm. and now i've gone off on a rampage and i'm sorry but like yeah ugh, it just but like see, now that's... it's all tying together and i'm like damn yeah. <laughs> look what but stephen that's... king is making me think about. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what i was gonna say that's why i like you know this book like it kind of 
it is like a nice intro, like we can talk about this shit kind of right. thing. Mm-hmm. And that's what I felt when I first read it. It was like, oh, this book's talking about some real shit. Like yeah. I love Red Rising and how that talks about like society and yeah, politics facts. That's true. And, and that kind of stuff. But this is like very internal, emotional, psychological. Yeah. Like what have we done to each other in mm-hmm. like a societal kind of way? That's very like micro where, you know, Red Rising is huge you know, whole world encompassing, but this is like, this is why I am the way I am. This Mm -hmm. is why I was repressed. This is why my parents were like this and that those endless cycles. But I guess one thing I wanted to talk to you about, or I wanted to ask you because, you know, this, I I talked about in our intro episode, like this is when I found out women had periods Mm -hmm. (laughs) was through this book. And like, I don't know, like was, because in this book, the the way he talks about it's like, there's another character. I forgot what character. There's like some flashback or something to where some characters like I remember when I had my first period, I was excited and I just went to my mom. It's like I'm on the rag or whatever. <laughs> and I guess I was just going to ask you, like, is that because I was just trying to think for me, like if mm-hmm. if, if, if I if men had periods or whatever, mm-hmm. I think it would be a memorable thing. Like, yeah, oh, shit, it's it's going down, you yeah. know? Yeah. So like, was it like a memorable thing for you? And like, is it like, I guess like. Yeah, I guess parents would only tell their daughters, they they would tell their daughter, like that is the Mm -hmm. norm, right? Yeah, so um, it's definitely memorable. And I remember, I I, I don't know if, um, I I don't think that my mom ever sat me down and was like, hey, this is what a period is. But I, for the first, like, I, I, I grew up in... Well, I won't say grew up. I went to school. I started off like kindergarten up to fifth grade in California. So it was a little different mm. than like, I, I feel like I might have had a different experience than if I had, you know, gone to school in Alabama for those first few years. But I, I went to school in California and in my fifth grade year, they took all the girls out of the class and we had like a sit down, like almost like sex ed. But in instead of sex ed, it was a, about like your period, like here's what to expect. Here's like pads. Here are tampons. Like it was like a whole educational experience, which was really cool. Uh, and I remember oh. like I remember like being optimistic about my period, not really knowing at all, like just knowing like this is something that happens to you and like essentially you're a woman after that you know what i'm saying like this is like a Mm. milestone basically and so after i had this class i remember like some of my friends like mind you were 10 years old at this point but some of my friends in my class like started having periods around this time and like more specifically like one of my best friends like at the time she had started having her period and i remember like being jealous like as other girls like we were jealous that she had started her period and it was like none of us had yet um and when I got to when I moved so I moved to Alabama and started my sixth grade year in Alabama and that's when I like I started when I was in sixth grade and it was like it definitely was it was still like scary because you're like oh my god like I have no idea like what is going on but Mm -hmm. I still had some back like I knew it was coming like I knew at some point this is gonna come and it was almost like I was like hoping for it too now once it happened I'm like oh damn this shit sucks that's one thing that I feel like they don't tell you Mm -hmm. and I don't know like if girls in Alabama or other states like I want to like specifically point out the south because I just feel like the south is so behind (laughs) on a lot of stuff so I don't know if that's something that happens for elementary or like early middle school girls in the south but it was something that I was grateful for like grateful to have had going to school in California because at least when it did happen I knew like this was a thing that's supposed to happen so it didn't completely catch me off guard like Carrie yeah but at the same time it wasn't really detailed enough to really give you a full idea or picture of what it means to have your period like it shouldn't just be taught like oh now you're a woman or now like oh like Mm. oh this is just something that happens like no bitch first of all i need to know everything that goes (laughs) into this right and so for me i had that um but my little sister like i said my sister is 14 now when she was 12 I decided like, okay, we're going to have a sit down conversation and we're going to go over what this means. And she had not started her period yet, but I knew, okay, she's, Mm -hmm. I think she was 11 going on 12. I started mine when I was 11. So I'm like, okay, I know it's going to come soon. So like myself, my cousin, um, who's, you know, a few years younger than me, my female cousin, Mm -hmm. one of my friends, and then even my brother, like we all sat down 
And mm-hmm. we had a conversation with my sister about sex. So like, I guess the birds and the bees talk and mm-hmm. then everything that goes into like having a period, including like, here's how to put on a pad. Here's how to put on a tampon. Do you mm-hmm. have any questions? And then we had my brother there to kind of give her the male perspective of things because it's like, OK, like now my sister's in high school and mm-hmm. I feel like it's also important to kind of know what boys are going through, like boys your age are experiencing at this time because Mm. when you're a 13 year old girl like of course you're going to be around 13 year old boys and 13 year old boys are just i mean they're 13 year old boys right and like (laughs) i feel like it's important to kind of know everything that they're going through Mm -hmm. as well because otherwise you're going to be kind of like blindsided yeah so like that was something that I thought was important to do with my sister and like that'll be something if I have children if I have whether whether I have a daughter or a son or both like that's something that I feel is going to be important to do with them even like my son like for you I feel like that's sad that you had no idea that girls go through this until you read this fucking book like that should have been mm. something that boys also get taught as well. Like it shouldn't be such a taboo. Why are there grown men who don't know what like menstruation is and like what females go through every like literally once a month, like what it takes to get someone pregnant or, you know, what I'm saying? like, yeah. I don't know. I just feel like that's so important. And we just yeah. like it's the taboo around it should be removed and it should just be looked at like this is just normal human stuff. Let's yeah. make sure our kids are prepared. This is why people get pregnant at fucking 14, mm-hmm. 15 and have no idea what yeah. the fuck is going on. Like, I've seen so many stories of like 14 year old girls being pregnant and have no idea that they're pregnant. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, don't That's... even know, don't know what to think. Don't even, didn't even realize that was a damn possibility. And that's yeah, terrible. Cause it's like a. It's like being misinformed or uninformed Mm -hmm. just makes it easier for you to be manipulated. Yeah. And like, unfortunately, with women, I I feel like it's it's always like an older boy Mm -hmm. or man who can use a young girl who just doesn't know. Yeah. And it's not that they're like, they just don't know. You know, like if I don't know anything about buying a car, I walk into a car dealership guess what? Like anyone could just fucking ride me around and yeah. I'll walk out of that bitch with a facts, car. Facts. And I mean, like, and vice versa too with bo- young boys too. I've seen mm-hmm. stories of like older women, you know, preying on younger oh, like boys. And yeah. yeah. And like getting pregnant and you got pregnant by a, a 12, 13 year old boy because, you know, well, <sighs> well, first of all, you're being nasty because that's fucked up, right? You're preying on yeah. a child. But then it's like, does this kid even know what the fuck is going on? You know what I'm saying? Like, no, probably not. And that's, I mean, I I don't know. Like, I just feel like that's so unfair. Like we're setting kids up to fail. Like, just like I said, (laughs) Carrie's mom is setting her up for failure. Uh, We've talked about a lot of the themes and Mm -hmm. ideas that this uh, book has, uh, you know, kind of propped into us uh, Mm -hmm. with everything that we've said before. But I just wanted to do like a quick little breakdown of the events. So one thing I just kind of wanted to talk to, uh, talk about broadly. Mm -hmm. And like the first time I read it, this didn't bother me second time i read it bothered me more third Mm -hmm. time fourth time fifth time i think this is probably like my sixth time reading this book i was gonna ask you because this is like the part of the book that i dislike the most Mm -hmm. i don't like the way this story is told just generally the there's like these weird like uh excerpts from like news stories Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. interviews and i don't like it because it like spoils the book you yeah. know, like it literally tells you from yeah. the get go, everyone dies or yeah. like, whatever. <laughs> like, so I wanted to ask you because this is the first time you read it. I was like super curious, like how does it read to you? And like, luckily, I don't think Stephen King has done this since. And yeah. I feel like yeah, this yeah, yeah, was yeah. the entire point was he wrote a very short novel, I think, like only 150, 200 pages. Mm-hmm. And the publisher wanted more. Oh, and I guess this was his way of fixing that by make, beefing it up. Oh, okay. I think it's a flaw. Like, I really... Yeah. Um, So I thought that was really weird because I have read other Stephen King and I have never seen him do that before. So that was definitely something I noted. Like, oh, like, okay, like, that's an interesting thing to have done. I definitely feel like it does give away. (laughs) It it (laughs) does, like, immediately give away. Like, I'm like, oh, because... I don't know. I guess like in my head, I don't know, like 
again, just super vague memories of the movie. Like nothing super specific other than like I knew people die, but that's like all I knew. And, but this, I'm like, oh, everyone died. Like I'm like, oh, oh, like her mom died. Like I, there's so many things that I'm like, oh, okay. Like you just told me a lot of what's going to happen in this book and so yeah so that's weird because I feel like I've and and I was wondering that I was like I wonder did he only do this for this book like was this something like I knew that you said this was his first book so I'm like I wonder if that was something that only happened here or if he did this a few times and then he stopped because I know like I said the few books that I've read I don't know where they are on you know like what number they are but I knew that I never saw that before like I was like this is just like a new concept so I don't hate it i guess like it Mm -hmm. and maybe like how you said like the first time you read it it didn't really bother you that much but then the you know like you read it more and you're like "Mm, this kind of stupid or you know it bothered you more and more so it's like i don't like hate it but i do think it's really weird and like interesting but it's like he gives us little excerpts but they're so small some of them are like one paragraph and i'm like was that necessary to add here Mm -hmm. or like, like did i really need to know that yet the excerpt where it's like the lady who was the neighbor when like the stones came through that was the Mm -hmm. only one that i was like oh this was a good one like that one i enjoyed because it was like okay it's kind of like a flashback like we we basically get a flashback and so that was something i thought was cool but the other ones i don't necessarily know if they were like really needed i don't really yeah i don't i don't really feel like they added any value to the to the book or to the story because it's kind of like information i could have just found out at the end that like oh Mm -hmm. everybody died you know what i'm saying like if it's supposed to be a thriller it's like well you just told me like that she's telekinetic i mean i feel like the book would have ran so differently if we're just like yeah finding out as carrie's finding out that she has like this telekinesis like power and then bam like at the end oh my god everybody die where it's like we're kind of just like it's like we don't know that they're not giving us the details in the in the little excerpts but they are spoiling like she's telekinetic also she killed everybody also like (laughs) there's some background her mom's crazy as fuck also you know like Mm -hmm. it's like okay Mm -hmm. i don't know if it was like needed but it's it's there so i guess i'm dealing with it's not like when i read them i don't like just skip over them because i'm annoyed it's just kind of like okay i guess it's part of the book but yeah i mean i I feel like i could do without it and like it kind of takes away the mystery of what's gonna happen like it's yeah 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 because this you know this just to tie it in a little bit to like the red rising thing you know it's Mm -hmm. like in red rising there's a part of the book where it's like we don't hear Darrow's thoughts. Yeah. And we're like, you know, it's kind of confusing. Yeah, but yeah, you, yeah. you understand because we experienced all that not knowing what Darrow was going to do. And it was more exciting. And this book is really cemented for me. It's like, like, uh, especially this kind of format. Like, there's a whole saying in writing and filmmaking, like, show, don't tell. Like, don't tell mm-hmm. me what's going to happen. Show it to me. Yeah. Like, don't tell me what I should feel. Show, show me how it feels. Mm, okay. And, like, these little segments, and I don't know the exact terminology of like what this is called Mm -hmm. but this happens a lot with i think like with writers who i don't know like they're they're like almost like an experience or Mm -hmm. i don't know like they think it's cool yeah i never like i've never read something like this or watch the movie like this that works there's there's movies that do the same thing where it's like let's just say it's like a serial killer right and the movie mm-hmm. starts and you see you see the serial killer and he's confessing like well the first girl i killed was blah 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 yeah. and then we cut and we see the event but we already know so yeah. like you're removing so much tension and yes. emotion yes yes and i think i think the only way because i was trying to think like reading this like all right if if i were to do this like how would i like in what way could this be useful and i think the only way that this kind of format would work like let's just use the serial killer right and he's saying this is how i killed her like let's just say it's a story about a serial killer confessing to his murders Mm -hmm. and you start the book and you start with his confessions and in between confessions we see what really happened yeah i think it would be so genius and perfect if you have a serial killer you know over four chapters explain how he killed a victim Mm -hmm. and then we get four chapters of how it actually happened from Mm -hmm. the perspective of the victim yeah and it's completely different and then you realize 
everything he said was a lie. All this information is bullshit. And I think that would make it interesting because now you feel like you're spoiled. But in reality, the person telling you this story was a liar. And yeah. I think that's the only way this kind of format would work is if, you know, we heard all these news clippings saying it was Carrie's fault. But then in the reality, it wasn't her fault. Someone yeah. else killed everybody, you know? Yeah. Oh, and that would be okay, like, whoa, okay, what okay. the fuck? Like, this is... Yeah. Oh, that's And it good. would add tension because yeah. now you can't trust what's it being said to you. Mm -hmm. So now you're going to immediately think, wait, that didn't happen. Something else happened. And then you're spiraling more into mystery yeah. where this one, how he writes it here, there is no mystery. There is no suspense. There's no real drama. So like, yeah, I think that is like the biggest negative of yeah. this book. Is Ooh, kind that's, of the that's juicy. So I, because <laughs> what I was going to say was, first of all, that's juicy. Genius idea. <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Would definitely like read or watch something like that for sure. Right up my alley. What I was going to say was it reminds me of because I just started this show on Netflix. So the show just dropped. Told you I'm like a huge true crime, like junkie fan, whatever. There's a new series on Netflix about Jeffrey Dahmer. It's like the Dahmer mm. thing. And I started it last night. Now, mind you, I only watched the first episode of the show. And like, you know, like I guess for anybody who doesn't know Jeffrey Dahmer, he's like, a, you know, he's a he's a pretty notorious serial killer in the u.s and mm. he was known because he was a cannibal at the you know like he's a serial killer but he's but... eating he's eating people as well so um oh. and this is like real like you know like real true shit this really happened and so this Dahmer yeah. show that just came out on netflix mind you it's obvious it's a it, it's not a documentary it's like a dramatized version of the story and i don't know a huge i don't know a whole lot of information about the jeffrey Dahmer story i just know like ah oh, this man was a cannibal and primarily killed you know young black homosexual men but anyways <laughs> the show episode one starts off with it's showing how jeffrey Dahmer gets caught so it doesn't start off with like how does this serial killer become a serial killer? It's not showing us like, oh, how, you know, his first kill went. How did he like what was leading up to the first kill? How like and then how does it, you know, how does it turn into like he's a cannibal? He, how many people did he kill? Like it literally starts off with his last attempt, which, you know, was just an attempt. He goes to a bar. He gets he picks up a guy. He brings him back to his his home and the guy basically gets away. And this is how Jeffrey Dahmer is caught. And I again, I've mm -hmm. only watched the first episode but this is not at all how i thought the show was going to open up and so i'm assuming that the show is going to be working with flashbacks like i'm assuming i don't i don't know if they're going to we started at the end and now we're going to work backwards which is interesting yeah. or if they're starting at the end well but that this kind of reminds me of that and that's something i was going to say at the beginning like it just reminds me of that because i'm like well now i already know what's happening <laughs> like yeah. i already know yeah. and like it doesn't say like i know this all like well i guess i won't spoil but like i know like how this ends but i so i guess it doesn't give us like the super specifics but it does tell us like everyone dies and you're like mm -hmm. oh okay so i guess everyone died <laughs> it's like it yeah didn't say how yeah. <laughs> it doesn't give us like huge specific information but it does kind of take away from the like shock and awe of like oh my god everybody died <laughs> so yeah. like that's interesting yeah. and for me like a person i know you know how the book continues you know how the book ends for me like someone who doesn't know i guess i'm still hoping that there's going to be some sort of a twist or something that i didn't see coming because with him him giving us that information so early on i'm like okay well there's got to be more to it right like it can't yeah. just be like it can't just yeah. be like oh you're setting up the story by telling us that carrie was bullied and then through these little excerpts you you let us know that she kills everybody and that she's telekinetic because that's just too easy like i i'm still thinking yeah. as a first-time reader there's got to be some kind of plot twist here though like there's got to be something you're not saying or something i didn't see coming especially first-time reader of this book but not a first-time 
time reader of like a Stephen King novel, I'm like, there's got to be some more to this that you're not saying yeah. to me in this. And I'm yeah. hoping that there is. Um, yeah. So uh, I guess I'll I have hope... to see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll have to see. I, I will say like, yeah, that the structure is a negative. I mm -hmm. think he doesn't like I think this is probably like one of the weakest books that I've, I've only read a couple of books from him. But okay. I think this is actually one of his weakest just because of that element. Gotcha. Because gotcha. yeah, like once you tell someone like let, let's just say there's a bomb in, mm -hmm. in a house or something mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. like now you're expecting ooh, what's going to be better than the bomb or what's going to be right. bigger than the bomb? right 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 because like as audience you know as, as a reader as, as a person who uh, hears a story there's always like that the end has to hit you know yeah, yeah and yeah. if you tell me something in the beginning i'm i'm gonna expect something unexpected because right. that's the that's the beauty and magic of a good story is the unexpected mm -hmm. you know like in red rising i was gonna like, i was I just think... about to say like i'll be hit with some red rising type plot twists yeah like that guy <laughs> if if nothing else he knows how to deliver a story yeah you know? and yeah. that is very important to deliver like there's like a whole saying like don't give a reader what they want give them what they don't know they want mm -hmm. and that is like the twist that is the surprise that is the yes. like fuck i didn't know this shit like, was gonna happen what? where you gotta like close your book for a second put yeah. it down you're like bitch what i gotta like process before <laughs> i continue reading like that type of situation yeah yeah, yeah. Oh and i guess but, that's what i'm like hoping for but you're like your response i'm like mm, i'm sounds like i'm probably not gonna get this like huge like oh my god like and that's like something i'm hoping for because i'm thinking if you're telling me like what mm -hmm. should have been the biggest part of the book, right? If you're telling me at the beginning, this bitch mm -hmm. kills everybody and she's fucking magical and has telekinetic powers, then bitch, it's got to be something better at the end that you that I don't know, right? And it, yeah, if, if because not, why would you tell me everything? Right? Because yeah. <laughs> exactly, if there's not something bigger than telekinesis and murder, then what? <laughs> like. What was the reason? You could have just held that at the end and I could have been like, fuck, bitch. She's telekinetic <laughs> and she murdered everybody. Like that could have been the plot twist. So now yeah. I'm like, damn, if he sets me up for this, I'm going to be like, wow, Steven, that's some bullshit because you've, because <laughs> I know that he's done that in some of the other books that I've read. You know, like I've definitely, I've read some of his other books and been like, wow, like that was a great ass book. Like I thoroughly enjoyed mm -hmm. that. I read that shit like it was a, you know, a page turner type thing. And this one, yeah. I'm not bored reading it by any means, but mm -hmm. I am like, now I feel like I'm expecting more. Now I'm like, bitch, you better hit me with some shit. And if he doesn't it's gonna be like yeah. well why did you waste your time telling me that at the beginning because you could have hit me with some shit at the end could have yeah. really hit me with yeah. some shit there and you didn't yeah. so you 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 soiled it you know you know like so <laughs> you spoiled your own story yeah man. Like, that's come crazy on, man. that's crazy um i guess i'll have to see yeah. it you know how it turns out and to me it sounds like you're, you don't sound as excited like oh yeah it's gonna hit you it's, uh, i feel like i'm gonna no. be <laughs> disappointed at the end like damn it probably on like episode three of this when we finish the book i'm like fuck i was disappointed <laughs> yeah yes yeah, so i guess i'll have to see but but I do want to hit some points that I also think this book does really well. Like we talked mm -hmm. about like the bullying aspect mm -hmm. and like some mm -hmm. of that stuff. Something that I, I, every time I read this book, I always forget how much I love this, which is like, there's just like cool little moments, mm -hmm. like little scenes Um, that the, the, the the very early on in the book, we hear uh, or we see a scene with PE teacher Miss Dis Disjardin, mm -hmm. and she's with the principal. Why is her name love... so hard to pronounce? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I yeah. just had to throw that in there. Why is it Disjardin or whatever the fuck it is? I'm like, seriously, yeah, it could be. It, it could couldn't be, be Miss Smith. It couldn't be Miss Smith. Like that would have been so much easier. <laughs> and like, n definitely, like, a no. <laughs> if anyone has that last name, like, n like, n yeah, <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> Like, you know, this is We're not meant to, to offend us. or anything. I'm just like, damn, I don't know how to say that name. Uh, like, and I want to say it right, but I don't know what it is. And now I feel like I got to look it up. But like, yeah. it's like when I'm reading it, I'm like discharging it, and I feel like I'm an I'm Americanizing it. And I feel like that's not how you say it. But I mean, maybe it is. Oh, yeah. 
You it know? is. It is a weird. I wonder where that name is from. I don't know. I hate mispronouncing people's names, and I don't know if that's just because like people mispronounce my name all the time, and I feel mm. like my name is simple, but apparently it is not. You know, what so, are some mispronunciations? Like, you okay, with? well, you know, so it's Ariel, right? And I feel like it's mm. just like okay, Ariel, but like Ariel all the time, Ariel mm. all the time, or like someone mm. called me one time <laughs> Ariel, someone called me Arielli. I'm like, what the fuck is <laughs> happening it shouldn't be this difficult you know it's so funny because today at work I had this conversation with my manager um because like there's another girl on my team and they've set me up to be her mentor and her name is Ariel and it's spelled like the little mermaid and so of course like they're like oh hey this is your mentee and so I ask in a little chat I'm like hey how do you say your name like is it Ariel or is it Ariel and she's like oh it's Ariel I'm like okay cool like that's so simple for me I'm like all right great it's Mm -hmm. Ariel and then everyone else in the chat like oh my god because i'm telling her i'm like yeah mine's spelled i mean mine's pronounced ariel too they're like oh my god why didn't you tell me it was ariel i've been saying it the wrong way i'm like at this point like you have said it both (laughs) ways and also i'm 26 and i'm used to people saying it wrong so i will respond to any variation anything that sounds even remotely close to Ariel Mm. I'll respond to it because I just like assume that people are going to get it wrong so even though like I said again to me it feels like super simple I don't understand why this is so difficult but like (laughs) disjarden I'm like I don't know how the fuck to say like what is that that can't be like an American like I mean Mm. nothing is really American I guess uh, uh, unless you're like Native American but like that's just like not a normal name I see so I'm like how do I say that? I wish you would have picked something mm. simpler because now I feel like I, every time I read it, I almost feel like I skip over it because I don't want to say it wrong. I'm like, I know who oh, he's talking yeah. about. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I don't know how to I say this. That. But I'm like, Miss D, yeah. Miss D, I don't know how to I don't <laughs> know how to say your name. So like I'm just gonna skip it. But now I feel like I gotta look it up just to see. Like, how's that pronounced? Where is that yeah. from? Like what the fuck I is don't know. Pardon? We'll have to, for sure, on the next episode, we'll have actual factual evidence. But Hell I want to yeah. say it's Jardin is what I just immediately think it is. But I okay. don't know. I mispronounce everyone's name on all my podcasts. Gotcha. <laughs> so. Gotcha. Yeah. And um, and yeah, and we do. We typically do make it a point to mispronounce names. So whatever. It's just Jardin but- on here. <laughs> And for anybody who doesn't know how to spell my name, it's like the mermaid. So it's like A-R-I-E-L-L-E. And it just doesn't make sense for it to be Arielli. I'm so sorry. Like, that doesn't make sense to me. (laughs) And it's unfortunate that my mom, like, I like, I love the way my name is spelled. Like, I love my name. But I, at the same time, I'm like, mom, why did you have to make this so difficult for people? You could have just spelled it like the mermaid. Mm-hmm. And I feel like maybe that would have mm-hmm. been a little more simple for people to understand. You add that extra L-E and then people are just like, what? It fucking yeah. breaks their brain. People are just, just like, like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> like, I don't, I've never seen some shit like this. Mind you, I've seen so many people, their names spelled the same way as mine. And I'm like, oh, wow. Okay, look at all these people with the same name as me. And yet we still get called Arielli. And I'm like, bitch, mm. what the hell? Mm. I think in my dorm chief in basic training, her name was spelled the exact same way as mine, but her it was pronounced Ariel. And I'm like, see, you just confused people. Like you just made it <laughs> extra confusing. We all for no need reason. to accept right? one like, pronunciation. It, we all, <laughs> if we're gonna spell it this way, it's gotta be Ariel. And I'm gonna claim it as the way you pronounce mine. Okay, so anything <laughs> outside of Ariel, if it's spelled the same way as mine, is wrong. It's just wrong. <laughs> like we just gotta commit, and I'm claiming it. It's Ariel. If it's spelled, if it's spelled the way it's spelled Planting for my the flag name, down. yeah, like the, I'll be the, the first one to claim that shit. It's Ariel. If it's spelled like how mine is spelled, and you say it's Ariel, you're wrong, and I'm calling yeah. you Ariel. But anyways, oh I don't know God. how we got here. Oh, Desjardin, right? That's how <laughs> yeah, we got Des here. <laughs> but <Ugh>. yeah. <laughs> anyways, <laughs> what? Back to Mrs. What D, because I'm calling her Miss D from here on mm. out. I don't give a damn. Like I don't want to okay. say it wrong. <laughs> if any of our uh, listeners have a last name just Jordan, and it's totally wrong my bad my bad hey but it's yeah it's miss d from me and, y- and y'all just know <laughs> who i'm talking about from here on out yeah well miss yeah miss just Jordan, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm gonna run with it um she, I, the thing like, i commit. always yeah, i'm just gonna commit. <laughs> just uh you know remember to send us an email at redrinktalk at uh gmail.com <laughs> leave a review <laughs> Tell us, Tell us you guys fucking on. suck because we, we said the name wrong. 
<laughs> yeah, we're gonna have like one star reviews. <laughs> Mind you, <Nice>. this <laughs> is a drinking podcast okay so we are yeah. also a little tipsy you know might be hovering on the side mm-hmm. of like drunk by the time we got mm-hmm, to this mm-hmm. point so it is what yeah. it is mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> but said what we said. Uh, <laughs> the thing i wanted to like mention is like i love how like little small scenes at least for me like mm-hmm. they almost feel like cinematic and like i can yeah. almost see them at like movie scenes you know like i kind of complained yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah. about the red rising guy like, I feel like he didn't take time with certain sequences. Mm-hmm. And I think Stephen King is, like, in this sweet spot of explaining things in a way to where I, f- like, I see them in my yes. head. And yes. And, like, just this simple conversation of Mr. Jardin with the principal, Mr. Morton, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. how he describes their interactions and how mm-hmm. they talk. And, like, you can tell, like, I just, I like, I can visualize this principal yeah. who doesn't really understand women or no. girls or <laughs> even like his students like he thinks he's like you know like i'm the principal yeah you know, that's his whole life is i'm the principal yeah and it's just that mindset and that style of person and i just love how like i don't know, i just love how this whole scene plays out with carrie there and him getting her name wrong every damn every time, like time he says it oh my god <laughs> that shit actually had me kind of laughing because i was like dude (laughs) this guy has no idea what the fuck he's talking about like he just says it wrong every time Mm -hmm. Ugh. but yeah Yeah. keep going keep going i love (laughs) i I love how he keeps like fucking up he he, like uh hurts his finger he hits his head Mm -hmm. his ashtray falls over (laughs) like all this like weird shit's going on and i love how that's kind of like hinting at carries telekinetic powers yeah yeah. which goes back to like i just wish all the other shit was stripped out because if we didn't know she's telekinetic we could think oh this is just like weird shit going on yeah but if we but and and if we didn't know we'd be like the in the back of our head we could be like oh like maybe she's doing this shit shit. exactly oh that would have been so much better i feel i'm only 100 pages in but i feel like that would have been better I, I agree, too. But yeah, I love that scene. There's another scene that is like really simple, too. Like even the the scene we kind of talked about with um the neighbor and mm-hmm. like how she talks about like their beef with the, with the other neighbor, like your typical neighbor beef mm-hmm. going mm-hmm. on between the two families and how she's out there. Like, I think she like removes her top at one point or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. To like tan her back or yeah, whatever. She's out, out there in her bathing suit and her titties. Mm-hmm. I remember. Yep. She, <laughs> I remember she said baby Carrie was talking about her titties. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like she ain't never seen yeah. boobs before. <laughs> yep. She was like, how do I get some of those yeah. right there? I need that. I need that. <laughs> Is that on Amazon? Like, <laughs> right. Maybe. How do I get some of those? <laughs> I want those racks right there. Like that shit was so funny too because I'm like, that's so fun. Like that, I don't know. That's just so funny because she said Carrie was like three or four, like looking at it. Like, how the fuck do I get titties like this? Like, what yeah, what are damn. these? Mom said damn. these are these are sins, but look at those. I want some of that. <laughs> it's like they look nice. <laughs> right. I mean, I'm not gonna <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like i like how like that scene as well like how it was kind of described mm-hmm. like with like we were kind of in that girl's the 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 young woman that you know tanning or whatever we're in her like perspective and i love like i don't know it's just like it felt kind of real you know like mm-hmm. how she was talking about carrie being like kind of weird and awkward and pointing at her and like not understanding and like how he described like their faces and their mm-hmm. reactions and their movements. Mm-hmm. Like that's something I really like. Like even back to the principal thing, like how in between dialogue, he would say like Miss Dujardin would like shift like while she's standing or the principal would like grab at something or he, yeah. he like bent a uh, little paper clips because he's nervous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like those little like scenes of you describing someone acting like mm-hmm. or reacting to something without saying anything. Like that like really plants me in like, a reality where i'm like mm-hmm. oh well, yeah i i do that like you know when i'm nervous yeah, i'm yeah, yeah. scratching my finger a weird way yeah and i'm not thinking about it and i hope no one else notices it but right. some people do notice it and they're like oh anthony's you know fucking uncomfortable right now and i like how i don't know i like how he does that with all these mm-hmm. like small interactions mm-hmm. yeah um, i mean that's a, that's a good point because i guess I'd, i wasn't really thinking about it in the moment but now that you're saying it, i'm like yeah this is a lot different from like our red rising series because mm-hmm. those i mean those interactions were so easy to picture like it I, I at no point like there were a few points in red 
well, more than a few points in Red Rising where I felt like I'm basically just skipping over like descriptions because I don't really understand what's happening. Mm -hmm. Or I'm thinking like I need more descriptions because I don't know what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't know what's yeah. happening. But this book, it really just felt like, and maybe that's why it was so easy to read while I was like, okay, like let me read it over a few days. Like where, you know, even though there's not a lot of action happening, it didn't really feel dry. It just kind of felt yeah. like I'm like almost watching a story, not necessarily reading a story because I could I could pretty much see everything that was happening. To be honest, like now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, oh yeah, like it felt just really real. Like I, yeah. I just felt like I'm watching this play out not necessarily oh i'm reading a book and so it was like super interesting and he does do like he does do a really great job especially like when the um like you talked about the paper clips like when the the principal's talking to the to the chris like that that girl chris oh. her, her dad is, who's a lawyer like that oh. whole scene where he's like oh. you know like with the paper clips and stuff i'm like oh this is just i don't know like that just felt so real every part of this book i feel like i've been able to like see very well like or just picture in my mind like again almost seamlessly like i'm watching something not necessarily yeah. like i'm reading something and that's really nice coming from a book where even though i feel like with red rising we got a lot of action we got a lot of this mm -hmm. and that like we got a lot of like societal things where the book overall was good it it did feel feel more like i'm reading a book and I, I kind of got lost on a lot of the visuals. This book has mm -hmm. no issues with visuals. None. I it's see everything. Like mm -hmm. And he's working with like such a small budget, you know, like yeah, there's nothing yeah, yeah. extraordinary happening yet. Yeah. yeah. And that, that's why I'm like, ooh, like, damn, if Stephen King would have wrote Red Rising. Yeah. Oof, Imagine what that been... shit would have looked like. <laughs> right. I mean, because even so... like even just getting the visuals of like Carrie, even like, getting the visuals yeah. of, like I have a visual in my head of like what I think her mom looks like and like how mm. their house is kind of set up and what Carrie yep. dresses like. Like there's so many things that I'm like, whereas like Darrow in Red Rising, I have no idea what that boy looked like. You yeah, know what I'm I saying? Like I really have I really the entire time I was reading Red Rising had didn't really have a set like idea of what I thought Darrow looked like or what I thought like golds looked like generally. Mm -hmm. But this book, yeah. I'm like, I like every character I'm like, okay. Like I, I know yep. what Miss D looks like, you know what I'm saying? Like oh, yeah, <laughs> every she is character like, oh I'm like, God. okay. She... Like I have an idea in my head of what all these people look like and how all of them act. Everything just yeah. feels so much more real, I guess. Mm -hmm. Whereas like Red Rising, we didn't really get those types of yeah. description. And and really, really, to be honest, like Stephen King didn't need to give us all those descriptions. Oh, like, OK, she has this color hair and this color eyes and this is her body shape. Like, I really didn't need all that to still get a really good idea of like mm -hmm. what these people look like just based off of like the mannerisms that he's giving me yeah. and like how they're reacting in these situations. I'm able to form all that stuff on my own. Um, yeah. so that, that's a huge difference now. I mean, now that you, the writer have brought that up, I'm like, wow, <laughs> that, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. The, uh, the other parts that we kind of haven't mentioned was one thing I, I, I think about all the time with this book is like, it's not really in the perspective of Carrie because we jump around to At like all. other characters a lot. Yeah. And I think the movie that you watch that I also watched, mm -hmm. it is all, Carrie's perspective and oh. what the book is really about is how other people see Carrie um, yeah one of the big characters is Sue Snell mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, is it Sue yeah Sue Snell um she is like the popular girl who feels bad about this whole thing and I think it's an interesting like little idea you know like she feels very guilty about her like privilege and her popularity and like all this kind of stuff and she is the one that comes up with this idea with her boyfriend who is like the football team leader and like all this kind of shit like your typical <laughs> mm -hmm. bro -y, most popular kid in school boy mm -hmm. in school and i love the scene where like they have sex that yeah. first time and she yeah. talks about how it hurts and it doesn't feel good <laughs> yeah. and they've done it like seven times and it still yeah. doesn't feel good and she feels all guilty like i love how all that is explained because it feels real like it feels As like fuck. a real yeah <laughs> yeah no and, like, that is like the real like... that is so real yeah <laughs> and yeah. that's like and the other thing like just from like my perspective as a guy is like the guy is not aware 
<laughs> she's thinking about like, yo, the last seven times we've done been this shit, pure, it has not been ass, it for me. Pure trash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I feel like that's so real. Like as a girl, I can be like, that shit's real as fuck. Like that's so funny. Like, yeah, I have a wife now and I love my wife, but like I, I did not start off like dating women. So like I yeah, like I can co-sign. <laughs> If, if there's any <laughs> part of this that I was like, ooh, I felt that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sue, I feel, I feel you, yeah. girl. Like, <laughs> like what yeah. the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> she's basically just oh doing God. it uh, because she thinks that's what she's supposed to do, right? Like. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Exactly. And yeah. like she even mentions in a part like that she's kind of jealous that other girls are enjoying their love you know and they're like probably lying else, yeah and everyone else in the group is saying like oh it after the first time it feels great or Ooh, even liars. during the first time it feels great after no, a liars <laughs> and it's like yeah that like ignorance that is just passed out, like the misinformation yeah. even amongst other women in this time period mm -hmm. is like just that whole societal thing and I, I just thought that was like an interesting little idea and topic and it like it makes me really like not necessarily care about this character but it, it is an interesting like lens into her perspective because it's like you wouldn't think in a book about a bullied girl that we'd hear and we'd see in the mind of one of the people that was bullying her because she was one of the people throwing tampons at her. Yeah. And laughing bitch. at her. Yeah. Yeah. And it's but like, I don't know, like that. I guess that speaks to like peer pressure, right? Like mm -hmm. this girl, yep, she feels guilty. She feels like, but like I can remember now I, I never, I was never like involved in something like, oh, I'm like bullying this person. Like that's just not me as a person. I, I, I just cannot subscribe to that type of shit. Like, absolutely not mm -hmm. but i'm sure there's probably at some point like i probably participated in a joke against another not, probably not to their face because i would have like i would have felt too bad <laughs> and <Yeah>. like uh <laughs> but like like never like that but peer pressure is such a real thing yeah and i feel like sue really like embodies that like she feels so guilty about doing this and it's almost like even like miss d is kind of like i can't believe sue of all people would do that yeah. and i really just like kind of i felt like i really got where sue was coming from because like when you're 16 like the the opinions of your peers is like it's so important it's to you like it is because when you're 16 what else do you have Nothing. But you're like, all you do is go to school. All you do is stay around these same kids for eight <laughs> hours a day, if not more, if you have extracurriculars or if you hang out with them on the yeah. side, eight plus hours, at least 40 40 hours a week like it's a full-time fucking job these yeah. other kids are your life this is where you get your sense of purpose is school how your peers view you and so peer pressure is just such a real thing that even though they talk about peer pressure in school i really still don't think they capture it well enough like it is such yeah. a real real thing there's things that i've done again never like bullying or anything like that like, that's just not something I can get with. But there's other things that I've done or I did when I was in high school that now as a 26 year old, I'm like, I can't believe I, you know, did that or like I and like mostly it's like let other people talk about like another student like this and didn't mm -hmm. say something because now at 26 that should just straight up wouldn't stand like don't come over here talking shit about another person who's not here to stick up for themselves or not you know like why would like really but as a kid it's like you just kind of let people do their thing and you don't want to stick up for someone else or you don't want to say something because you don't want to all of a sudden be then the target of everyone's like like harsh words or bullying or whatever it is like yeah. you still want to be on the positive side even if the positive side just means no one's talking about you that's positive you know yeah it doesn't have to be unpopular i wasn't a popular kid i wasn't like oh i'm the i'm the popular girl at school that wasn't me i wasn't in the popular like group or clique or whatever but i I guess like I wasn't like in the lower part where I'm getting bullied every day at school either in high school like that that wasn't happening to me so I was just kind of like somewhere just in the middle where like people didn't really there was nothing really to say about me you know and I yeah. guess that's still positive and so like Sue she's a she's a she seems to be a popular girl and it's like she's probably not a bad person like overall mm. but she's still 
a victim of peer pressure. Like she's still yeah. susceptible to that. And she went in hard on Carrie fucking throwing tampons and getting in on mm-hmm. this like chanting and stuff like that. And it just like shows how easy, like how, how slippery a slope that is. Right. Especially yeah. like I said, in high school, like that, your peers like perception of you just like means everything because you don't have anything else there's literally nothing else like your whole life is based on high school (laughs) like there's just there's nothing else and like that makes or breaks you in the moment of course when we're adults we're like that shit was so stupid and dumb and petty and that has like literally no bearing on my life like you know what i'm saying like whatever like high school was whatever and now i'm an adult and i live my life however Mm -hmm. But in yeah. high school, you're not thinking that, you know, it's like, this is my life now. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I mean, I felt so bad for Carrie, but I also really, I guess I can sympathize, I guess, with Sue to a, to a certain extent. When it came to the like having her boyfriend ask Carrie to the prom, that's the mm. part where I said this is gone too far. First of all, I thought that it was going to be Chris who whose idea this was and i thought it was gonna be like a what's mm, that movie that like trip. 10 10 things i hate about you or whatever like you know yeah. those those movies there's a bunch of fucking honestly actually now that i think about it, there's a bunch of like 90s movies that are kind of like based on the same concept where it's like the girl that gets bullied in school and the most the most popular guy asks her ask her to the prom or to the dance or whatever the fuck to make fun yeah, of like her a daydream yeah yeah and i thought this was going to be that type of situation situation and not realizing it was going to be sue i guess somewhere in her head thinking that she is making up for the fact that she mm. made fun of her i'm to me i'm thinking that's not a rational <laughs> thought process <laughs> i'm thinking like how did you how did you get to that like how did you think that was a good idea i don't yeah. know and i and i stop yeah. i did stop like right when he asked her so i really don't know anything past that but i'm like that doesn't seem like a good idea. <laughs> like, and oh. and the boyfriend kind of mentions that. Like, why? Yeah. One, why do you think she'll say yes? Yeah. Two, wouldn't everyone just realize it? Because I'm the most popular boy. And yeah, he definitely says to her, like, um, I don't think that's a good idea, babe. And she's like, no, it'd be such a good idea. Mm. Yeah. Uh. And I, I get her perspective. Well, like, I don't get it because I, I don't think I've ever been in that position of <laughs> yeah. uh, popularity or uh, yeah, privilege. No. Yeah, yeah, but, same. Like, I, I, I feel that a lot nowadays where, like, someone has, you know, this level of success or privilege or popularity or what, whatever have you, right? And they mm-hmm. feel guilty about it. And then they think in their mind, like, the only way I can feel unguilty is by giving some of it away. But then, like, I don't know. It, it's like a weird, tricky kind of situation because it's like me i don't want you to treat me any different just because i'm different Mm -hmm. you know like that make that is like in my mind a form of racism too like if you give me an opportunity just because i'm whatever you say i am like no fuck you like i'm I'm a normal fucking person like yeah i expect to be treated just like anyone else so like it's like a weird i don't know it's just so weird like it's it's just a complicated thing because and they're like in her perspective, she's like, well, what can I do? I need to fix it. I need to be mm-hmm. better. And like, you know, we saw that a lot with, with a lot of the like social things that happened in like 2020, 2021. There was a lot of people with privilege who were like, how do I be better? And like, how do I fix it? You know, mm-hmm. and like there's not a simple answer. There's not like just do this, you know, and I think this character kind of embodies that kind of perspective and that kind of person who was like, well, I'll just. I'll I'll not go to prom and I'll make my boyfriend take her to prom. And like, that's going to yeah. fix everything. That's going to fix all the bullying. Right. But it's like, like it's what? such a deep issue, you know, like all these things. And like, I don't know, there's no easy answer. And I, I kind of like how that is it, like how that's like kind of portrayed in the book as well. It's like, like she thinks just by doing this, everything's going to be fixed and everything's going to be solved. Yeah. And then, I mean, we're kind of already spoiled. Like, it gets worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this is like, if she wouldn't have done this, it probably wouldn't have gotten it worse. It probably wouldn't have gotten worse. <laughs> and that's just, that That just goes to show, like, as an adult reading this, I'm just like, oh my God, teenagers are so dumb. And like, I know I was a teenager <laughs> at some point. And maybe when I was a teenager, I don't know, if I had read this when I was a teenager, would, would I have thought, that kind of makes sense. I don't know, because I really don't remember what it felt like 
to be a teenager because my frontal lobe has fully developed now and i'm thinking bitch mm-hmm. that's dumb that is a dumb 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 decision that is horrible also yeah. i've watched enough again movies <laughs> where it's centered around the unpopular or bullied girl being asked out by the most popular guy and it just turns into a fucking shit show right except i guess at the yeah. end of that like usually it's a romance and like he falls in love with her and realizes, oh, she's not like this like weird nerd bitch that everyone's. Yeah, like... but that's not how this book ends. Like I know that's not how this book <laughs> book ends. Mm-hmm. This is no romance. So I'm just thinking, like, ma'am, that doesn't make sense. I mean, I really, I'm no. Now that I'm thinking about it more, I think even as a teenager, I would have looked at this and been like, that's really what you came up with. That's probably. Yeah. That sounds stupid. Like that just sounds like a poor idea but it I guess sounds it's like more. yeah it's gonna cause more harm than good yeah and it's almost like a selfish thing you know it's like it's absolutely selfish she wants to make herself feel better she doesn't actually the thing is she doesn't she really to, yep. care about carrie she cares about the fact that she feels guilty for participating yep. in this and so she's yep. trying to mitigate and be like oh well well what would make me feel better oh well yeah. if i pitied carrie and let my boyfriend the most popular guy at school ask her out then that's probably fine because I know that Carrie has a crush on my boyfriend. So I'm going to let, you yeah. know, like that, that, but, but what is that actually doing for Carrie? She's like thinking, oh, this is a little pity thing. My boyfriend will ask you out. You'll yeah. go to the dance and, and all wrongs will be r- made right. And that's <laughs> just like not how life works, you know, like, yep. It's definitely it's a hundred percent selfish. So it's like I sympathize on the fact that she feels guilty and she maybe was like peer pressured into like going along with the bullying that that occurred with 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 Carrie having her first period in that scene. But yeah. she also maybe could have simply apologized to Carrie. Like, yeah. where's the human nature to this? Where she could have just went to mm-hmm. Carrie and been like, honestly, I'm so sorry for that. You know, like I just got swept up in the moment and I I didn't mean for this to happen. And then maybe when shit's happening in the future, stick up for Carrie. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. maybe yeah. use your popularity and be like, mm. oh, well, why are we making fun of this girl? Like, why are we doing mm. this? Why are we throwing things at her? Why are we calling her names? Like, let's not do that. Like, maybe mm. do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, use your privilege and your, you know, like your popularity to kind of make a difference different to actually make a difference instead you're thinking let me let my my boyfriend who carrie has a crush on ask her to the dance and nothing else like you know it's not going to go any mm-hmm. further and like what like what is that supposed to do i yeah 100 percent agree with you yeah like it, it could it could have been as easy as yeah going up to her and talking to her yeah and apologizing Did you apologize and, yeah and then yeah defending her like using your popularity against the zeitgeist of everyone making fun yeah. of her it's like hey it's not funny to make fun of her anymore right. if you make fun of like, her you're making fun of me and then everyone's like wait sue is like popular right Why exactly are we gonna like, make fun of her exactly or like oh be, sue be the popular shield. bitch is friends with carrie oh okay well like maybe there's a reason let's all try to actually get to know carrie as a person like turn it around instead mm-hmm. she's just like come up with this idea that just seems like trash ass and i'm just like i guess that's like yeah <laughs> how teenagers think and that just doesn't make sense it's (laughs) because like and this is like i never went to prom Mm -hmm. oh uh, because i i I dropped out (laughs) of of high school so i don't know if if it's a big deal to most people but i remember reading it i was like who the fuck gives a fuck about prom like is that a big deal um no that's a big deal yeah that's a big deal now like me like for me like i I mean i went to four proms technically so like it's definitely yeah well i went to we had (laughs) junior and senior prom at my high school and then the guy that i was dating when i was in high school his school also had junior and senior prom so i went oh actually i went to five proms i went to five so now i feel like (laughs) <laughs> I say that humbly, <laughs> but so I went to, <laughs> yeah, I went to mine, you know, both of mine, both of the guys I was dating. And then my friend at the time, her cousin needed a date to want to his junior prom. And I went with him when I was a senior. So I went to five different proms mm. and it's definitely, that's definitely a big thing for me. I'm not really, again, I'm like an introvert and I'm not like a party person. I don't really like to dance in public.
public. It's not really my thing, but it was, it just almost felt like this is what you're supposed to do. Like, oh, I'm in like a junior. Okay, we have junior prom. Like you're supposed to go to prom. And so I went. And my senior year, I definitely was like, oh, I have, like senior year felt like, oh, this is my last year in high school. Like I'm going to have a good time at my prom. Like I'm going to, I'm going to enjoy myself. I feel like, okay, I'm about to be an adult. I don't know. Mm. indoctrination probably probably but <laughs> so <laughs> but it felt like senior, a milestone though. yeah senior prom junior prom not so much but senior prom felt like such a big thing so that's definitely i mean I, again i would have never been like oh my god like you said i can't go to prom my life is over that wouldn't have ever been my take on it but for some people i do know it it really is that like i have to go to my senior prom i kind of just yeah. went because it was just like well this is like what you do when you're a senior you go to prom like but it wasn't like life or death but so for some people yeah like i know people who it was like literally like a life or death situation <laughs> that they mm. go to their prom mm. so i guess like i get that well i mean it's like not a personal thing but i do know people who have been like that so but for you like someone who didn't go to prom or who didn't like have that experience i could see why you'd be like i don't really know if that's a thing or not but it is it definitely is a thing especially i guess yeah. for for girls because y'all are definitely the ones that like really you know glow up for that mm-hmm. event. you know mm-hmm. like it's it's all hands on deck yeah like we're it's all going about all your out. dress and your makeup <laughs> and your hair yeah i mean and now it's an even bigger thing now i think for kids these days they kind of go like the, these kids spend hundreds of dollars on their dress i went to like macy's oh, and got a dress you know what i'm saying like my shit was i went to the macy's that was like me that was me like doing it up like my mom took me mm. to macy's we don't shop at macy's there's not a macy's in montgomery so we drew we drove from montgomery to birmingham to go to macy to go to the galleria to get to get to macy's and get a dress that was a big deal these kids these days i think they spend like hundreds of dollars on their yeah like outfits and you know the guy and the girl gotta like match like and their custom made pieces and they got they're renting out like fancy cars that that was not the the deal yeah Yeah. like that and they're (laughs) they're, like going past limos they're like want like maseratis and you know like shit like like weird shit like that like yeah like you gotta see every time prom like season comes around in like april may ish like it's a big thing on social media so you start seeing all these kids doing all this stuff. but i could never like it mine again was like a macy's dress and like that was a big Damn. deal but was prom even like a lit event like mm. i just imagine it's a school event so it's like a what school event. what's going yeah. on like it's just I music mean, yeah but usually like usually well for okay so like my school it wasn't like held at the school it's like they'll like rent out an area and you go to prom and it's just like a cool i don't know like like prom night was just like a huge event so like you start off you're taking pictures at the house like everyone's there like all your family members come they're taking pictures of you and your date your date comes and picks you up you go to dinner and then you go to prom and then you spend the whole night Mm. at prom and then maybe there's an after party i didn't go to any after parties Mm. but like my senior year my senior year for like our senior prom the seniors had like a dinner so it was like a whole like we literally before prom went to take like etiquette classes in school like they literally gave us an etiquette class on like this is how you like these are the forks that you use this is how you eat your bread this is how you butter your bread like literally all this stuff like this is how they serve you from like left to right or whatever it is like i don't remember but we literally took a whole etiquette class and then so for the seniors they rented out like this like big ass building downtown and you go and there's like a whole scene your dinner so you go to the senior dinner none of the juniors are allowed here you go to your senior dinner it's great you use your etiquette skills that you've learned and then after that then of course like the actual prom starts and the juniors come and like so then you have like your seniors do like their whole walkout and so like you come and you have your date and you you like it's like spotlight on you they call your name individually you walk out blah 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 and then like prom happens and then after that like junior year I don't think we did anything after prom senior year we did like one of my friends she had like a whole like brunch thing so like our dates came over to her house we did like brunch and mind you it's like midnight and that's a big deal like you got you got like boys over at your house at midnight you're like 16 17 and it's like prom night and it was just like a whole thing like we did a whole like dinner brunch thing at her house until like a few you know like early in the morning and then they go back home and it's just like for us it was like a huge deal for like prom Mm. night I don't really remember 
remember my my junior prom I know we like went out to dinner and stuff like that but there was like a limo for my senior prom like there was like stuff that people did which was just like way different like some people really go out like they go all out for senior prom and if I hadn't had the friends I had then I wouldn't have gone all out you know like it was like senior prom we went to like a whole park and took pictures like all my friends in a group with our dates like it was just like it was ridiculous like now that I'm thinking back on it it was a lot it was a lot it's some some shit I would absolutely (laughs) never participate in now as like as an adult I absolutely like it's just not up my alley but I did it then because it was like that's what we're doing right like (laughs) it was like a whole thing like limos and taking pictures and photographer like real like not just like oh your mom taking a picture of you with her camera or her phone like photographers like whole I don't know that shit was actually kind of crazy now that I think about it um (laughs) but yeah so like it, it it is like it's a whole like um coming of age type feel Mm -hmm. like almost like it's just like Mm -hmm. your rite of passage like you're a senior now you're graduating you're about to go to college and prom is just like such a big thing that you have to do it's just part of it so this thing this is because this is this prom that they're going to or is this a dance i don't even remember is this just like a dance okay it's prom yeah oh yeah so then yeah, yeah this makes sense like and actually now that we've like now that I've relived my prom experience, I'm thinking I kind of see why Sue thought this might be a good idea because prom is such a big thing that she's thinking, well, if Carrie gets the most popular guy or one of the most popular mm-hmm. guys to ask her to prom, that's such a huge thing, you know? And yeah. it and it is like and might have been an even bigger thing back then. I don't know. But like it is. That's a big thing. So, yeah. And Even it could change I, it's your a, it's perception a shit of life. idea. Yeah, it's a shit idea. But now I'm thinking like why she thought, okay, like this is how I'm going to make up. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. but yeah, I mean, in, in reality, it's like it's prom. So it's really not that big a deal. But when you're in high school, it is that big of a deal. It is. Mm. I guess the final kind of point on that is the him actually asking her to prom and like that whole scene and sequence where, you know, she's really nervous. I love like one part where he initially asked her, asked her if, if, if she will go to prom with him. I guess she like freaks out. Right. <laughs> and then like he gets like a headache and he feels like he's about to like throw up. And, yeah. like, he's drunk or whatever the fuck. And I'm like, damn, her telekinesis power yeah. is that <laughs> hardcore. She like when she freaks out. Like there's like, I just imagine like a bubble, like an area around her. Like if you're in that little proximity, you're getting a fucking migraine Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm because she's going through some shit. And I love that little sequence where he's like dizzy and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. What did you think about like him like asking, actually like asking her out? Her Um, response. Yeah. I mean, so same idea, I guess, as you. Like I thought that was really kind of funny how it's like her emotions really impacted, not necessarily his emotions, but like impacted like his physical well being. (laughs) It's like he is literally (laughs) like he is experiencing some shit and doesn't even realize why he's experiencing some shit. And I'm sure she's not like fully aware of like why he's experiencing some shit, but it's just so funny. Like her just being like so caught off, like caught off guard about like why this guy that like she has been essentially like having a crush on for however long is now suddenly asking her to the prom like i can't imagine how weird and like off-putting but also exciting that might be oh yeah and and like just the the range of emotions that she would have went through and and i guess it's kind of like you can kind of tell just by like everything that he felt (laughs) you're like damn she was Mm -hmm. feeling some strong ass shit because he's affected by it yeah i mean that was interesting i again just don't if I if Stephen King hadn't ruined it and told me what was going to happen, I'd be like, yeah, I don't think this is a good idea, though. <laughs> like, I'd be thinking, yeah, it's probably not the best idea. I feel like some shit's going to happen. And I kind of low key mm-hmm. or high key know what's going to happen. So I don't know all the yeah. details, but he kind of already told me the, the outcome of it. But yeah, so I guess I'll just have to see like what the deets are after this <laughs> happens. Yeah. <laughs> And that's that's one thing I like kind of faintly thought about. It's like, all right, I was trying to like imagine myself like, all right, if I because I remember in high school, there was like the most popular girl Mm -hmm. and like everyone had a crush on her, including Mm me. Mm -hmm. And like I was like reading this thinking like, all right, what if that girl would have asked me Mm -hmm. to like prom or some shit? And I would have been like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. I Yeah, of course. Yeah. And I would have had the same reaction as Carrie. It's like, you're fucking with me. Like, like who's playing a joke? 
Like, this is not funny or whatever. But then there's like that slight, it's like winning the lottery. Like, I imagine it'd be that kind of feeling Mm -hmm. where like you win and then there's that like doubt. Like, there's no way I won. Like, there's no, there's no fucking way that I got this. Yeah. Like, I don't deserve it. I didn't, I don't, I didn't earn it. You know, whatever the fuck, like that doubt or whatever. And I like how she kind of goes through that little cycle of, like, no. And then it's like, you kind of want it to be true, though, you know, like, mm-hmm. um, and then like, just briefly, the other scene that I wanted to talk about uh, that I really liked is that we kind of hinted at it a little bit. I think Chris is her name. Her dad is a lawyer, mm-hmm. talks to the principal and they have like this like fucking like one to one, like, fucking, yeah, Stand-off. it almost feels like a, yeah, like a standoff, like a boxing match of yeah. just like weird legal terms. Like, yeah. I'm going to do this, you know, whatever the whatever school district the person whatever the fuck mm-hmm. and then like I, I i don't know i just loved how that was written and like executed and the whole like even how it ended with the teacher with and like the assistant or like whatever person coming back into the room and being like well what do you think is going to happen it's like i don't know but i'm real happy that i paid my unemployment insurance mm-hmm. and it's like fuck dude like yeah imagine going toe to toe with like alexander shinar yeah, right. <laughs> but then we find out, like when Chris is talking about it, she's like talking about how her dad's no longer gonna like go after them. And she's like basically talking about how he's a pussy. And I yeah. like, she, I don't remember what she said, but she basically calls him a pussy. And I just think that shit's so funny because to be real, like the, the principal made hella fucking good points. You know, he's like, mm-hmm. did you know that your daughter's a fucking bitch? And like, <laughs> basically we could have been did some shit and we haven't done it. So like really try it, bro. Like try me, like your daughter yeah. fucking sucks like she's she's (laughs) she's a terrorist in this goddamn uh school you know what i'm saying like and we haven't done anything about her and now he's gonna be mad because we put her in fucking detention and told her she can't go to fucking prom and actually the dad doesn't care about detention he cares about the prom because i guess that's really what all that chris cares about is this damn prom Mm mm-hmm but yeah, that oh shit's that shit's hilarious because I'm like, this, this principal gives no fucks. I actually that scene made me like the principal. I didn't really feel yeah. any type of way about him before, but I did like him when this scene happened. I agree. I agree. Cause he actually kind of went to bat for it. Not that he knows Carrie, but he did kind of go to bat for her. Yeah, like I like that. He's going to bat just for the principle of it. Yeah. You know, like yeah. just for the fact of like, no, 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 no. I don't care who the fuck you're fucking with. We're not we're not accepting it. Yeah. You know? We're yeah. not gonna fucking back down. We don't care if it's the most hated girl in school. Yeah. Like we have a line and this is the line. Yeah. So and your daughter let's go. Is. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I guess one last thing is do 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 I had a... Uh, Okay, so the next 100 pages we're going to read, because this book doesn't have chapters, I had to find a point. Okay. Um, So there's going to be a point. Once you read, I guess once the voting starts for king and queen of the prom, you can uh, pause. So for anyone listening, that'll be our next 100 kind of break, just right before we hear and announce who the winner of prom is. Awesome. I'm excited. Yeah. I was kind of sad when I I was kind of bummed when I read all my 100 pages. On the Kindle, it ended up being like, I'm on page 105. So I was a little bummed when I got to the end of it. I'm like, damn, I kind of want to keep going. So yeah. I feel that too. Like I'm starting to think like, hmm. like I'm starting to feel a little confident in myself. Like, all right, maybe we can bump up a little yeah. over a hundred pages. Like, I don't know. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we'll see how, we'll see how, we'll see how Golden Sun goes. If, you, if you're oh, kind of yeah, feeling yeah. it, we can maybe up it and see. And if it doesn't work, we'll go back down. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One thing I, I forgot to kind of mention, I have the paperback, but I had like such a bad week. I haven't been able to read at home. And I realized I had the audiobook like on Audible mm. or something for some reason. Yeah. I, I listened to the first hundred pages on mm. Audible and it was the first time I've like actually like tried an audiobook. Mm-hmm. And it was interesting. Like it actually has the actress of the original old movie or whatever read the oh. whole novel. And see, I grew up on audiobooks, so I haven't what? listened to one since. But my grandpa, so I actually like my my grandparents played a huge role in my childhood until until my grandma passed when I was ten. But mm. my grandpa, he used to he didn't really like fuck with us listening to music for mind you, like my grandpa's white, so let me just like throw that out there. He didn't really mm-hmm. like fuck with us listening to like <laughs> like rap and like all mm. that kind of stuff. So instead, he always used to play audiobooks for us, like 
every time we were in the car. And he was the one that like took us to school and picked us up. And I I mean, it had to be like at least no, like no less than a 30 minute drive to and from like school and his house, like maybe 45 to an hour. Like it was a long drive. So we always listened to audiobooks. So like I grew up listening to audiobooks and I remember loving it. Like, I mean, it was, it was amazing. I mean, I liked reading as a kid, but like audiobooks were great, especially when they would have like good like voice actors, especially Mm. like when they would do like different voices for each like because I've I've listened to some where they didn't change the voice and that just sucked but I think the last time I listened to an audiobook was when I was in high school and that was the last time I did it and I haven't listened to one and I keep like you know I got the Kindle and so I keep looking like oh maybe I should like try an audiobook and like are you enjoying it for this book like give us your review on an Mm. audiobook yeah please I I love it I like it a lot yeah because I've read it so many times but like hearing it is a totally different experience. And yeah. like one thing I realized, like reading is hard for me because I don't know if I have like a very minimal, like low, like dyslexia or something. Like, I don't know. Words get confusing when I read them. You mm-hmm. know, like it, it all gets jumbled up in my head. But listening to people, like mm-hmm. I've always enjoyed listening to people tell their stories or talking to people. Like that's my favorite part is listening to someone else talk about stuff. Yeah. Because like my mind just starts spinning with like what they're saying and like me yeah. imagining stuff. Yeah. And that's something like I like I listened to it uh, the past two days and like it was just exciting. Like I yeah. felt like I was imagining it better than I imagine when I read like I'm uh, an aspiring filmmaker as well and like I was imagining this shit like a movie like Mm -hmm. just hearing this woman like read this book I was just like damn like this is a this is a movie like I was imagining everything like I was just visually imagining it at all which I I struggle with when I read physically like I, I struggle with imagining things so I was like damn maybe audiobooks is like way more my speed or mm-hmm, like in mm-hmm. my alley or whatever so so i'm i'm loving i love it i love it like I, i'm actually gonna just not read it physically i'm just gonna yeah. stick with audiobook yeah see how yeah that- that's dope i'm excited excited for you like you got me like i already bought like the whole series for um red rising but you got me one to like r- listen to the audiobook Ooh. just because i'm like oh, you know what i haven't done it in such a long time i'm actually kind of like kind of like interested to see is that a format that's still I mean because I love listening to things as well I never I I like I enjoy reading and I did I did growing up so I don't have any issues with reading but for this book specifically I was looking at the audible version and for Wuthering Heights when I was buying that which I'm so glad that Mm. book was only 89 cents let me just say that because (laughs) what a waste that would have been but um (laughs) Yeah, so like I looked at that as well and I was like, oh, like maybe I should get the Audible version and just like listen to it because I definitely, definitely grew up on that as a as a format and really haven't gotten into it since then. Um, the one yeah. problem I have with audiobooks is the price of them because I was like looking at. Yeah, oh my God, why are they so expensive? Yeah, it's that's like the, that's honestly bucks. the reason. Yeah, that's and honestly like, the reason I didn't get it. It was more yeah. expensive to get the Audible than to get whatever the Kindle subscription is. I don't remember what it's called, but I don't have the Audible thing. And and even and I looked into getting it, but even if you get Audible, I think it's like you get three free books a month or something, which is probably not a bad deal if you're like listening to them over the course of like days or weeks. It's probably like for something like this podcast. I'm like, yeah, it probably actually would be a good deal. If I get like two or three free books, because we're only going through like one book a month, really. But <laughs> I'm just looking at it and I'm like, do I want to get like, do I want to pay for that? Mm-hmm. And I, and I think lot. that was a reason why I just it's got the regular book because it was just too much. But maybe one of these books I'll try. One thing I've been thinking about, like when I publish my book, I'm like, all right, the price is going to be set by how much it costs to print the book. Mm-hmm. Like that'll be the maximum is yeah. getting a paperback. And then everything under that will be cheaper because I want to like incentivize people owning digital just to like prevent, you know, paper and like killing Mm -hmm. trees and all that kind of shit. And then like, especially the audiobook, I'm like, I want that to be the same price as the Kindle version. You know, the Kindle version of a book is usually like five, six bucks or some shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like the the audio version should be that same price because it's just audio. And I like, agree. I like, I know they like got to pay the 30. actor, actress, but like, damn, you got to, I got to pay 20 bucks for the, like 20 no. bucks for this book. I could just buy the book for no. five bucks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And just read it myself. If your primary like mode of reading or 
listening to a book is in the car where you can't read, then that makes sense. But for me, a person who could read on my Kindle at home, it makes a little more like financial and monetary sense to just buy the book and not buy the yeah. audio version because yeah. it's expensive. But yeah, yeah, because there's no way that like the actors, the actors don't get like a royalty. They just there get should paid be a up fucking. Front. There should be a fucking podcast of someone who just reads books there. so it's just like free Ooh. it's just like a free way i wonder if like can you do that let's go let's do it I like mean, we could i do, do that we could be voice <laughs> actors and actresses oh, i'm like so with it. i'm like let's just come up with different voices and just read fucking books so people don't have to pay for the audio <laughs> for the audibles like, and imagine if we're doing down. drunk yeah hell just yeah that would be fun <laughs> i'd listen to that shit <laughs> just to add in some like here and there like oops sorry that wasn't actually part of the book but you get what i'm saying <laughs> like drunk readings of uh because actually we can technically do that with like free domain books oh uh, okay okay you know like um I'm trying to think of like recently what joined the free domain i think it was like winnie the pooh and like oh. there, there's like a bunch of like recent additions like peter pan and all that kind of stuff like so we could totally like just grab that book read it out and you know hell yeah i'm with it and like fuck up all the names (laughs) say all the names wrong as shit (laughs) oh my god and just like cuss throughout the like hell yeah just doing fucking peter pan's bitch (laughs) bitch ass came down and captain hooks super head at like literally just like fucking up the whole book (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that would be fun i would do oh that <laughs> all right well yeah, that that we'll add that to the podcast come up list. with a new right <laughs> <laughs> come up with the new podcast and i'm down like <laughs> you can record that on on wednesday nights and do this one on thursday nights it's lit yep. yeah <laughs> I think that's going to wrap us up for this little first part of our carry review. Thank you so much for listening. And if you did like our conversation or our discussion, please rate and review us on Apple Podcast and Spotify. And be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And send us a message with your thoughts at readdrinktalk at gmail.com. And... If you are interested in checking out my other stuff, I have other podcasts called Cineverm, a film podcast where I review movies. Headset Chat is a video game news podcast. I have two YouTube channels, A Lonely Gamer and A Lonely Critic. But yeah, we will see you next week.